Hi, and welcome to the Solori No Guts, No Glory Hour. I'm Janet. This is my husband, Vin. We would like to welcome tonight our special guest and special friend, Jerry Ferretti. Jerry is uh, multi-talented, much like so many people that we seem to have on the show. Um, we have high criteria here. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry is a singer, songwriter, um, writes screenplays, is a director. He does many things. So we want to welcome Jerry tonight because he's going to actually explain all the things he does. Jerry, welcome, welcome, Jerry. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. <laughs> Definitely. How are you tonight? Good. Yeah. It's, it's really a lot of fun to be here. I, I've heard so much about your show, and it's really nice to, to finally get here and do it. We have a lot of fun with it. You know, we just yeah. we just whip it out and just go with it. It's like Regis. Like yeah. <laughs> I'm Regis. <laughs> You're Regis. <laughs> Regis is, my, is almost dead. This is my I don't camp. know if you want to be Regis. Or not. Uh, but um, yeah, we talked about you coming on the show because hmm. you have so much talent. Oh, thank you. Um, I've known you probably for about about seven years now. Yeah, yeah, at least seven years. We work together. We've done a couple of happy hours in the past when we used to all do that. We don't seem to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. But and as we started to talk, I came to find that we have many uh, common factors. True. So we'll start off with the singing. You know, when when did you start? Oh, I was a little kid. I started singing as soon as I could really speak. I mean, I was in my I was in my bedroom. And I have pictures of me that, that I stumbled across recently that where I'm dressed as Elvis. Got as, the hairbrush. As, like, I got the hairbrush. The hairbrush. I, got the button, yeah. my, I think I had my father's white button shirt with the collar up. Right. You know, and I'm standing there. And I, and I found these pictures recently, and it's pretty funny. That's and how when old I started, you? probably about seven okay. when I was doing that. Yeah. I mean, I was, a, I was a big Elvis fan. And, well, and he's that, a great person to emulate because, I mean, everybody, I, I mean, I don't know how many people that don't really like Elvis. He's amazing. Right. You gotta he, love he him. did it all he's before anybody did he's anything. He's the king. Right. Yeah. I was 12 when he passed away, and it was like, Devastating. I, mean, yeah. I just spent that weekend well, recording icon. everything yeah. on the radio. Did you do chorus in school and stuff like did that? Chorus in school, and I actually, much like Elvis, I got my first public singing experience singing in church, um, singing solo in church that I went to, and uh, you know I fell in love with it really ever and since then. How old were you then? I was twelve. Twelve in church singing. Mm -hmm. And you grew up in Massapequa, is that correct? Right. I grew up in Lindenhurst, Vinny as well, but he went to public schools. But we were all pretty much neighbors. Right. You know, may have crossed each other's paths. At some point back in the day, mm -hmm. going to clubs, seeing different bands or whatever as teenagers. Right. I'm sure I actually was reading your bio, and um, you, your first your first outing of your singing talents was in church. Right. Mine was uh, in sixth grade at the spring concert. I sang the Candyman when Sammy Davis was on the charts with that song, and oh, it yeah. was. And I still carry that around. People still Absolutely. Facebook me. I remember when you sang the Candyman. I'm like, oh my god. The first time's but, always, always the best. And you know, it's like, yeah, you never like your first girlfriend. It's like yeah, exactly. first, first time you get. You remember it like it was like yesterday, do, do right? Feel, Absolutely. Let's admit Absolutely. it. Really, you feel like a little bit like a famous big shot. Well, you know, amongst your school and you know. Absolutely, was, without a doubt. Yeah, it was I mean, pretty cool. You're you're a star when you you know, right. and and you know you grow up with stars in your eyes. I think everybody grows up to a certain degree wanting to be a, a rock star or a singer or an entertainer. Mm -hmm. Everybody carries that with them. Even Everybody if wants to be famous, right? Right. Whether you have um, talent or not. I mean, and sometimes, uh -huh. you know, yeah. it's Some it's people a, don't have it and they, <laughs> they think they do. Or and, they want. and you know what? Everybody has a different gift. It's like even right. the people exactly. that don't have maybe a musical talent or whatever. And I've worked with people that are, that are just funny people right. and, you know. I mean, we, 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 somebody doesn't like that. I can't, I can't sing, but I can call a joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I leave this thing in the heart. And then there's people that can do it all. You know, one of my favorite entertainers really of all time, and uh, as I said, a big Elvis fan, but Dean Martin to me was the, the quintessential oh, yeah. entertainer. Yeah. I mean, he, sure. he did it all, and he did it all well, and he was just well-liked. And if, if I really could emulate anybody, it would be Dean Martin. Dean Martin's the number mm -hmm. one. That's, yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I used to love his movies with uh, Jerry Lewis. Right. They're, they're still... Yeah. Right. Classics, they're great, they're sure, fun to absolutely. watch when you can catch them every once in a while, you know. Um, in reading your bio, mm -hmm. another common factor that as I was reading this, I said, wow, oh my goodness, um, your dad was in a big band? My okay. father was a big band musician his whole life. And what did he play? What was his thing? He played clarinet and sax like, okay. oh, sax like nobody in the world. Bad I mean, really? he, he, uh, he worked with Benny Goodman's backup band when he was, you know, when he was younger and um, kind of got a little derailed. In, in much the way a lot of us do. We, he got married. <laughs> he met my mother and, uh, you know. It all tanks uh, from there. <laughs> yeah, kind of glad he did because I wouldn't uh, be sitting here right now. True. But, you know, he, he just, he did get out of it then for a while. And then he got back into it. 
and played, you know, really until until the end of his life. When yeah. he, you now, know, did he, he was, play around? Did he tour or anything like that? He or? played all over. He played all over the island. He okay. had a couple of different bands at different times in his mm -hmm. life. And then when he retired and moved to Florida, he became more busy than ever before in his life. Yeah. I mean, he was booked. He was booked four years after his death, wow. you know, for yeah. New Year's Eve, and, and he, he formed a band down in Florida. And, wow. and, and I mean, they, they ate that up down there. Yeah. It was all the retirees. Oh, yeah. sure. My dad was a, a singer in a big band. Mm -hmm. He played for years with the big, Bill Hitchborn's big band. They mm -hmm. traveled all over. My mother was really a music widow. Right. You know, if my right. dad wasn't at a gig, or he did theater, so he always did stage work. He always had the leads and plays and was amazing. Uh, if he wasn't doing one of those two things, he was on the green chair in the living room right. with his headphones on, always. My mom was totally a music widow, but my dad passed away with a collection of music, and, you know, I grew up with that, and I feel like we have such a common factor. And, and I don't know, maybe you music, probably. They probably experienced the same thing, being he was a big band musician. I mean, so much of my music came from conversations with my father. I mean, I could, I could probably write a, a, a play called Conversations with My Father, like Billy yeah, Crystal yeah. did or oh, something, that's cool. and talk about yeah. the way he, I mean, a lot of it was arguing, you know, friendly, yeah. fun arguing, yeah. you know, Frank Sinatra's better than Elvis, and right, there's, right. No, there's no convincing either one of right. us that that's, exactly. that that's not true, you know, but he, he did have an appreciation for music, and it was nice when I was able to play something, or when I would be in the car with him as I got older, and I'd listen to like, you know, 97.5 or the, one of the music stations that mm -hmm. would play like a, a rock song or, or you know Beatles tune or something, and he'd be listening to it because it was an instrumental version or something. He'd be like, "This is a really good song." I'm like, you know who that is? Do you know who that is? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, you know that's funny and because you guys at least kind of had common ground in that way. I right. grew up when I was young. My first band, 17, 18 years old, I sang Aerosmith. I was in like an all Led Zeppelin Aerosmith band. Mm -hmm. And my dad was like, "What is that crap that you're listening <laughs> right. to?" You know, he had such an appreciation for. Big band music and, you know, right. Tommy Dorsey and all that stuff, and he just thought it was garbage. Now, if he heard me sing, still doing some of that stuff, but doing okay. some lighter stuff as well, he would just be, well, if he's watching me, no, he's, he's like, okay, I can deal with them. Right. I Zeppelin, feel the same you way. Know, you know. And, and although he criticized what I listen to, now when I criticize my kids and what they listen to, I'm right. There you go. Yeah. Well, it's perpetual, right? Now it's your turn. Well, that's how it is. And I try once sometimes. You, once you like, become the dad, you become right. Right. You know? I Remember, try and go. When you're little, you know, you argue with your dad. You know, he's, he's the worst. You don't let me do this. You don't let me do that. And as you grow older, dad you. becomes wild. That's my best friend. You know, it's, Absolutely. he's the man, you know. Mm -hmm. It's funny how it changes. And that goes down on with the kids, too. At one point, the kids are like, dad's a square. Dad don't know nothing. Dad this. As they get older, like, dad's cool, you know. Right. And, yeah. Sometimes it's too late. You find the appreciation much long after it's Absolutely. maybe too late to have the conversations you could have had earlier. But regardless of that, so um, so you sang and now what brought you into theater or brought you into Elvis impersonations? I don't know what stages of your life if you want to like tell us where you went. Well, it just became some one thing led into another. I mean, uh, when I when I got out of school, I, I knew I wanted to go into theater, and I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and I studied over there. Which everything that that I talk about here that led up to where I am now also led up to the current screenplay that I've written that I'm, you know, hopefully will be filmed next year. And it's, it's just a, a pattern of things that took place from getting involved with the American Academy of Dramatic Arts from then, you know, I, I got involved in Long Island Theater. So I started doing a lot of local theater, various different plays, met straight a lot of people. Straight plays or you did musicals Yeah, as straight well, plays. Right? Yeah, sing? mostly straight. straight. I got into, you know, okay. a lot of theater doing... Uh, Dyer Van Frank and, and 12 Angry Men and a lot of different... Now that's good because that's diverse. You know, right. you still have your music with your other outlet, but yet to do some straight plays is actually really Do you do thing. any of that anymore? Any more theater? Or? I, I did a play about five years ago. I got back into it. I did a play over at the, at the, um, the Theater 109 at Farmingdale. Okay, and, yeah, uh, I know it. I did it, but really, with everything else that I'm working on, you really got to put a lot of time. Right. You, you have to put a tremendous Absolutely. amount of time. Right. They were the rehearsals every lines, single yeah. night, Absolutely. and you got and, and I, I loved it. I loved doing it again. But at the time, I was still, you know, just coming out of what I was doing, the other project that I was doing, which was uh, dinner theater, and I wasn't sure where I was going with that. I was doing some DJing. I was singing. I got involved when I would DJ. I would sing. I would do Dean Martin impersonations and it snowballed. It, all, it really, snowballed. Yeah. <laughs> when I started doing Elvis, I, I, I hooked up with an agency that so it was like, you know, do you do other people? Can you do Neil Diamond was huge. Yeah, Neil I used Diamond's to get called big. to do yeah. Neil Diamond yeah. stuff. And mm -hmm. so I said, Yeah, I can and do that. And you did Neil too? Yeah, yeah. I did Neil Diamond, I did Dean Martin, I did um did you, you know, do Sammy? Can we see the I, Yeah, no, I, I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably I would like to see. <laughs> but I did do a show, one of the most fun shows I did, I did a show in the city with a uh, 
they wanted a, a Rat Pack. The whole, they, they had yeah. the new dean. They Which brought in a Sinatra stuff. guy, and they flew in a, a, a Sammy from Vegas. Did they? Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking really Sammy's kind of a little more difficult to find. Yeah. Than a Frank, because a lot of people do Frank, and, and a lot of people do Dino and stuff. But yeah, right. I think, uh, And but, it's funny because the whole the whole Elvis impersonation world used to really be like you know like a little bit of a you know look down on and, and you know dress up like Elvis because right. let's face it the Elvis suit can walk out on stage by itself exactly right. and exactly. it doesn't really matter if you can sing or not and that's really what drove me away from it is there was too many people in it that just were like you know they, they'd put the suit on well, and go out there. You have there a story. Which we actually discussed a few weeks back when we were at Cedar Beach to hear a mutual friends band. Um, I asked you if you knew a guy named Jack. Right. And we knew a guy that my brother was friends with forever that is an Elvis impersonator. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if he still does it, but he has the real sideburns and everything, yep. and he keeps them year round. I know. And everywhere he went, you know, he had the hair and the dark hair and. Um, and how did you, I just happened to ask you if you knew him, and you have a story for that. I, I didn't want people funny. seeing me in public and going, hey, Elvis. You know, I was like, no, 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 yeah, no I'm not going to do yeah, that. No. But what happened is when I first was thinking of getting into this, uh, remember Sports Plus yeah, sure. in Lake Grove? Mm -hmm. they, yeah. My friend calls me up one day and says, you know, they're doing an Elvis contest at Sports Plus. And I was like, really? He goes, yeah, here's the number. I just took it off the sign. So I called up, and I think it was BAB or BLI. One of the radio stations was running it. And I called, and they said, oh, yeah, well, you can't get into it because we closed registration like a week ago. So I was like, oh, all right. He goes, why? I said, because I, I think I could win this contest. And he's like, oh, yeah, let me hear you sing. So I had my sound system right next to me. I turned on Blue Moon of Kentucky. It was over the phone. Right over the phone. Right. I sing into the phone. It just happened, huh? And the guy goes, <laughs> just happened, my you know what? Friend. Come down. You're in the contest. Really? And a week later, I walked away with $500. Nice. And Jack was one of the... And Jack... Jack was a one long of the time friend of my brother who does this for a living on the side from his other job. And it was so very frustrating out. because they had us pick songs, and they said nobody can duplicate songs. So I picked Blue Suede Shoes, and when I went up there, right before me, Jack went on, and he sang Blue Suede Shoes. And I was like, what happened? And I went to the promoter, I said, I told me, he says, I don't know how this happened. So I said, you know, I'll just do Blue Suede Shoes, and I'll do it better. Right. And I right. just went okay. out there, so and I did, did it, it again. Right. 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 So you contest. weren't even really... By the rules, supposed to be in the contest, but no. the guy let you in, which is cool. Right. You, know, you take what you can get, and you wound up. Showing and Jack and I him. stayed yeah. friends. I mean, he used yeah. to coach. Uh, he used to. Jack um, Burns, um, actually, yeah, he used, yeah. I don't know if he still does, but he used to umpire softball games, and I'd get to a softball game, and he'd be standing behind the plate. That's, <laughs> yeah. funny. That's great. Small world shows yeah. you right. how it every day gets yeah. smaller. Definitely, definitely. So, okay, so that was the Elvis thing, which you stopped doing when? I stopped. Well, during the time that I got into it, I had started doing because uh, when I was doing my theater work. I ended up working with a man who was doing dinner theater. He was doing murder mysteries. He wrote a murder mystery play, and, he's, and I got hired, and I met some people in acting classes. I brought them in who all became lifelong friends. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of impersonations, a lot of uh, different costume characters. They were, they were all comedies, a lot of improv. So and, I mean, we had, you know, we had Columbo, and we had Chief Inspector Cuzzo, and we had, <laughs> we had Maxwell stuff. Smart. Uh, okay. I mean, it was, we, we did them all. And, um, were there any females? In the mix, there. Yeah, happy, right? we, we had. What, what characters? Um, well, I'm trying to think. What happened is I ended up writing my own murder mystery. I, I left mm. this company. He moved out to Vegas, and we're still still friends. He's out there doing. He's made a film and great guy. But I started doing the murder mystery murder, murder mysteries on my own. I wrote my own murder mystery called Scenes from an Italian Restaurant. It was about a murder that takes place in an Italian restaurant, and Columbo and Sherlock Holmes were the lead detectives, and we named everybody after Italian. Like there was. Roseanne Mano was one of the suspects. She was okay. Romano. And we, uh, had, we had Al Dente, who was okay, like, Joe Pesci was popular at the time. It, so we had it. a guy come in who did a Joe Pesci impersonation. Okay. Oh, and it great. was all that, that kind of stuff. And, you know, a lot of improv. So there was a script, but what unfolded during those shows, you, you never knew. I mean, Which shows true comedic talent. Right. If you just that, ad living at times when something you just feel something and it fits in. That takes At the time, genius. I was That's a genius. lot more limber, and I played I played Clouseau in a couple of oh, them. And I mean, I used to do the Chevy Chase. I used to enter and fall down flights of stairs. And do you have anything on tape? I mean, I know we don't have anything here tonight in in the studio, but do you yeah. have uh, oh, yeah. archive stuff of stuff you Absolutely. did? Oh, I would love to see that. Too. Is there anything people can right? go on like YouTube or anything like that? If they could you know what? It was so or? long ago. It was really before the YouTube okay. craze. I never actually put anything on YouTube. I stopped doing the murder mysteries. Probably right after my my sixteen my sixteen year old daughter was born, she has she had open heart surgery when she was young, oh, and wow, it just kind of it kind of took us a little bit out of yeah. that sure. uh, during that time. Switch to something. That's, that's, right. That's when she reached, and thank God she's perfect now, but um, oh. yeah. when she reached about three or four years old, I got back into it. I had written 
two more murder mysteries, and um, one of them was centered around an Elvis impersonator. And it just it, we started going back, and people were asking us to come back and do shows. And I was like, I got to write another one. Like, right. And that's where all the real effort comes in, is right. You know what? I'm just gonna stop you for one moment because we're gonna pick up on this in a moment. We're just gonna go to a quick commercial break. We got some funny commercials, and we'll be back speaking again with Mr. Jerry Perez. Spitting is the number one cause of germ transmission in the continental United States. Just a FYI. We usually don't serve your kind, but since you had the balls to walk in here, I'll pour you one more drink before we lynch you. Sounds good. You know what? Let me get the black label. You guys take shekels? Just got back from a trip to Israel. All I got is a fistful of shekels. This is 
57-33. That was a pretty good year for me. Shabbat shalom, motherfuckers! Goddamn, brother, you kicking ass. Taking a page out of Sweetback's book. Mm-hmm. They bled your mama, they bled your papa, they won't read you. That's it. Right on, man. Hi, welcome back to the Solori No Guts, No Glory. Uh, we're here with Jerry Ferretti talking about his uh, little Elvis impersonation. And before we uh, went to break, I wanted to ask you, have you, have you been to Memphis? Yes. Have you been to Elvis' house? After I was doing all of this, people were amazed that I never went to Grace. Yeah, that's It was crazy. a long time, and I had plans that were canceled, and it was just, I went last October. I left the day of the hurricane. And, I remember uh, that. Yep. Yeah, I and I, and it, was, it was terrible, because I actually left not knowing the destruction, because my house was fine. And your girls right. were home. Did well, my one daughter came with me. My other daughter stayed with her okay. mom. Okay, give a quick shout-out to your girls. Absolutely. Before we go any further. Right over there. Where okay. am I looking? Okay, right over there? Yeah. Right okay. there. Okay. Gina Marie, Erica. Right, right in this camera. <laughs> How are you doing, girls? It's pretty fun here. You should have been here, but I love you, and I'll see you when I get home. Awesome. Uh, Two girls. Two girls. No, I have three girls. 16 and 21. How, many, how 16 old are you? I have uh, 20. 23 and 32. And we have a granddaughter. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and you are right. definitely a good dad because all through these years that I have known you, uh, trials and tribulations, like, you know, everybody seems to have at times. And I know you're a very dedicated, loving father, I could tell That's you. I know most that. Important and I met you girls the other night and they're wonderful. Yeah. Listen, I was going to say, I was in Memphis too. I went to um, Graceland. And being in Elvis's house just, just gave me a feeling. I mean, it was the, oh, it's amazing. The coolest thing is like probably the coolest. 70s style house I've ever been in, you know, with the TV room had all those little 19 inch TVs back then, it wasn't big screen, right? So, he had like, like 15 or 20 of them on the wall, all next to each yep. other. Is all the shag carpet, the jungle room, the jungle, the pool room down the in the pool basement, room, <laughs> this is amazing. All his toys, and the caddies. I, it's funny because I went with my daughter, she came because she sings also, and that's the other great thing about music. I mean, talking about our fathers and how we used to argue and stuff, and it's that same thing with my daughter, but now she's actually singing with me. So she wanted to go, and we went down there, and, and of course, when we walked into Graceland, she's like, you're going to like spend the entire day here, right? I'm like, yes. <laughs> I said, you're not getting me out of here. Get the well, headset. Halfway through the day, she was right there. I mean, she was looking at every little thing. Yeah, that, it's, it's amazing. And the oh, house you is, the you, your house is probably oh, bigger than his. Oh, yeah, but no, it's, I, it's, no, I don't think I have no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're a co-op. No, yeah. Right but, now, yeah, I mean, it's like celebrities today, they have these palatial ma mansions, and they have 50 acres, and that was, you know, it wasn't like that. But when you get into his planes, and, yeah. and all of the costumes, and all, yeah. all the stuff. When you get to his uh, room, room with all the special, records, and the, the, all the awards. awards are endless. They go to yeah. the ceiling. Like yeah. endless. He had to convert racquetball courts yeah, and everything yeah. into awards. Room. I go uh, uh, like, the track. I, I win one movies. award. His movies were great. His movies were great. All right, here's a, here's a quick question. How many Grammy Awards did Elvis win? Uh, 87. 100, seven. 187. Three. 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 And none <laughs> of them were for rock and roll. They were all for gospel. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. All for gospel. But he had a lot of number one hits, right? Oh, yeah. He had pretty much more than anybody. Yeah. But, but the Grammy Awards, they, they just never I honored see if we him could, in that I want to see if we could uh, zoom in on this. <laughs> this is Jerry as Elvis. Who's Cadillac? Mine. You went the whole <laughs> night. <laughs> hardcore. I did what Jerry I did. Right. Jerry Hardcore Ferretti. Jerry Hardcore Ferretti. That's what your new name is. That's, that's awesome. the new name I'm giving you. Jerry Hardcore Ferretti. Awesome. It's good, right? Yep. So, but again, I closed that chapter. Elvis and is I, done. I really, and we're done with Elvis. Elvis, too. Neil Diamond, all of it was done right. because now I realized I want to do my own music. Now you're Jerry. I want, right, exactly. Okay, I mean, so. It, 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 so, what happened is, I, I, after I left doing the murder mysteries and I left the Elvis thing and, you know, personal issues that, you know, derail you a little bit. Right. I got back on track and I started writing again and I wrote some screenplays. I had done the, the Pink Panther, the Clouseau thing, so I said, I want to write a screenplay. And at the time, they hadn't redone the Pink Panther yet, which now they do with Steve Martin. So I had written a screenplay. I got it over to MGM. I was talking to somebody about it over there. They went in a different direction. I mean, I got it pretty far, but 
then again, it's very, very tough business yeah, so to break answers. in. Very it's tough. such a letdown because you could almost be so close. Right. And, and you, f you can almost taste it like you feel like this is probably it. You're right. And then let downs, which, you know, it's definitely in all the nature, aspects of, the, of, the, nature the, business. of the beast with this business. Yeah. So you have to really get to the point where you just do it because you love it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really where I got. And I started thinking about some different things. And one of the things that I did was I reflected back on my time at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. And in that school, you, when you go in, you have to walk up flights of stairs. And all over the walls, there's these pictures, these big, huge picture frames. And there's little tiny heads in the picture frame of all the people that attended the school. And every once in a while, you'll see you know, Robert Redford, or you'll see you know, Robert De Niro, or right. so, someone like that. You know, wow, there he is when he was yeah. young. And meanwhile, I started looking at the hundreds of other people you have no idea who they are. Exactly. This guy's probably a plumber. This guy is exactly. a teacher somewhere. And I went, what happens to these people? What happens to all the talent that they had? And that's what led me to my current script. That, and I also started thinking about music and how so many people that have these garage bands that became wedding bands, and you go see them, and they're so talented. They're there's so, talented. so much There's a lot talent. of talent. Just here on Long Island. Right. There's a lot of talent. I, I went to see like your, your band in the past. And mm -hmm. I all Amazing. these talented musicians, and I go, what, what happens? They all had the dream. So I started thinking, well, what, what would happen if Paul McCartney, who had a trunk load of songs, what if he appeared on the scene at 70 years old with a trunk load of songs? Nobody would mm -hmm. pay attention to him. Right. Because he's an old man. But the body of work is still the body of work. Yeah. So I took all of these thoughts and I said, what would happen if a bunch of guys who were 17 years old in the 70s, who went their separate ways, reconnected, back when they were in their 50s, their early 50s, and they finished a song that they were writing when they were in their teens. And now their children who have a garage band take their, the, the parents, the fathers, and they release this song to the YouTube world, to the you know, iTunes world, but wow. create a fake band as if these guys are 20. And they create this, this right. like cult, like who are these guys? Nobody knows who they are. And whether or not when, when the music is found out that it's coming from older people, when the young people find out that they've been listening to these older guys, well, how are they going to react? Are they going to accept them or are they going to reject them? Right, because in this business, it's all... So you have to, you know, it's Remember the so Weather Girls? Much. They had the, what, the Weather Girls, or was it the Weather Girls, or something box? They, I don't know. Right. They but put that's up like different women of Millie Vanilli. Right. Yeah. Remember? Well, like and show, this was sort like of the voice Millie... You don't know who's singing, right? Right. So no, absolutely. They're judging by talent alone, and not by everything else. My by daughter and I auditioned for the X Factor, and we both made it to the, to the third, almost into the fourth round. And a friend of mine who's an agent basically said, you know, your daughter has an amazing voice. If she, you know, cuts her hair short on one side, makes it orange on the other side, yeah. and wears a ridiculous outfit, she's yeah. got a better shot. Yeah. And it's, it's true. It's unfortunate, yeah. especially breaking in. You know, once it gets to the later rounds, yeah, then the talent does rise. But 16,000 people went mm -hmm. to the Nassau Coliseum, and they wow. chose a couple of hundred. And that was just the Nassau Coliseum. Just the Nassau Coliseum. They did it in four, four different locations. So, you know, it's a very hard thing. And, and again, it brings a lot of people that, that joy that, you know, oh, wow, I never would have made it if not for this show. But it also gives a lot of people right. some rejection. Rejection. So some it, people it, can't it, take it, and they, it's they, very they give up. Right. And, give up. And it's I've, longevity, you know. The one that stands in there the longest is a chance. Right. What, who's the guy? Uh, uh, Robin Thicke. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been doing music for years and years and years. Right. Yeah, how old is Finally he? Finally got a hit. Uh, and yeah. his father's famous, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, how, that's how hard it is, yeah. you know what I mean? And then some people like that and today, you have American Idol, you have the X Factor, you have all these things, you have YouTube. Back when we were young, you didn't have that. You know, right. you played in the garage, and as far as people could talk about you, that's how far it went. Right, you know? exactly. And, and it, it's so, you know, it's, it, you can't really look at the odds. You can't, because there's millions of people doing right. this, and millions of people on YouTube. And, and I used to do that. And now I'm at a point in my life where I just, no, ev everything is positive. It. It's yeah. just, That's it's good. going to happen. I know this film is going to get made. I, I've taken such a positive approach in the last few years, and it's amazing how things have just started to mm -hmm. happen and fall into place on a personal level. I've met a wonderful woman that I'm involved with, and... It's just everything just falls in place. You can you can actually make your we met her too future. She's here in the studio. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. And the name of the play is the uh, movie's called Bridge the Gap. The movie. And and what happened is the movie, the, the script basically was about um, bringing people together musically, but as 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 I wrote it, it became more about bringing everybody together. The story was about you know old friends and ex wives and mm -hmm. relationships and 
and it became so much more than just that concept of the music. That's almost like the underlying theme. And it's about what would happen. Every garage band is going, oh, I, wish, I wish I had made it years ago. Well, what would happen if you went to one of these bands that's playing local clubs and they did make it right. and they've got wives and families and children and responsibility? Are they going to be willing to up and go and say, yeah, let's go on tour? Like, it is the dream, but can you really handle it? Right. And, um, you know, thankfully it's been read by some people who have really, really loved it and given me a lot of positive feedback. And now I'm working... I, I connected you, you did. With, uh, yeah. which I'm hoping it works out. Me too. I'm going to say his name, Fred Carpenter. I know you sure, have yeah. uh, a meeting with him meeting next with week. Him next week. I'm hoping it goes well. He's going to read your screenplay, and you have a lot to talk about. Right. We've discussed it in we've detail, seen, and he's very seen interested. We've Fred's films. In his indie films. Amazing. Yeah, they're great, and I'm yeah. hoping that we're going to see yours maybe next year. So you're all done with it. It's all completed. Oh, it's all done. It's, oh, it's, it's ready, ready, ready to go. It, it is totally and ready now, to go. And your music that you've written is also incorporated in this. Well, that's what happened. As I wrote the story, I ended up becoming... The person, and I, I, my uh, cousin worked with me on the script. I mean, he's, I've been working with my cousin. He's a, a frustrated musician also. Mm -hmm. And we sort of started to become the people that we wrote about and things that happened. And you and I both on a, on a health level experienced things. And it was a little scary because we wrote about people. And then what we wrote about in that story started to happen to us. The music started to take off and the creativity started to happen, just like the people in the script. And one of the characters in the script I had written, there was a health issue. And then that happened to me, and it was mm -hmm. it was a little Twilight Zone-ish because it was autobiographical, but it was also a little self-fulfilling. Right. And it goes hand in hand with what I believe is if you say something, if you put something out there in the universe. Oh, that's what he believes. It, I mean, it, I do too, but he's that, always well, that's happened. The, the laws of attraction. Absolutely. Did you, did you read The Secret? Or? Absolutely. It's amazing. Big believer. Yeah. It was a life-changing experience for me, mm -hmm. and I believe in that. I believe thinking positive. I Negative takes up too much of your positive thought. Right. It's no, I have no it room in no my value. brain for negative. Nope. I've got to stay positive. I, you know, i got a beautiful wife. i got three lovely children, granddaughter. You know, Two stepsons two that are rocking. Awesome stepsons. Right. So Bobby i got to stay positive. Show. You know, got yeah. a great <laughs> show, great <laughs> friends. Great friends. Absolutely. But uh, is there, how's, how's there a way that people can get in touch with you? Because we reach 72 countries. So you got to... Um, a website, an email uh, address. Unfortunately, that's something that we've talked about. That what about I, uh, Facebook for now? Facebook? Yeah. Like well, see, I don't know if you have you're in, my in name. Yeah, of, I'm in the process of, of, of getting a website, website right? together. So Jerry Ferretti. Jerry on Ferretti Facebook. on Facebook. Absolutely. And that's um, F E R R E T I. Two T's. Uh, -E -R -R -E -T -T -I. Two R's. Two T's. It's Jerry, Jerry with a G. G. Right. And um, or my email, right. which is my initials G D F and G D F one nine six five. Right. at AOL.com. And everybody can find us on Madhouse TV and get that information. Absolutely. I have to cut you short okay. to just let everybody know we're going to take another commercial break and then we're bringing Mr. Ferretti up to play some of his music. So, uh, and Jen is going to sing with them too. That's right. And we have two other people. And we have in some the special right. musicians, great musicians also. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Cool. Hey, I'm Tom Mealy from the Harrison Law Group. You know, soft tissue injury, that's no joke. This is what we do. We're not new at this game. Don't waste valuable time going to firms who don't get it and can't do it. Call 1-800-INJURY-LAW. Huntington Toyota, the experience of a lifetime. Don't take our word for it. The experience for me at Huntington Toyota made me feel very comfortable. It's their professionalism, their honesty, and their integrity. I've bought at least nine or ten cars here at Huntington Toyota. They give me the best price around. It never was about high pressure. It never was about them. It was always about us. Today's cars are very similar, but Huntington Toyota is very different. Huntington Toyota, where it's all about you. Are you planning an event and want to include entertainment, but you're not sure where to turn? Act1Entertainment.net has provided over 1,500 events with quality, affordable live entertainment at private parties, corporate affairs, festivals, bike rallies, and more. Act1 will fit into your budget. They're friendly, reliable, and do all the legwork for you. They take all major credit cards. Log on to Act1Entertainment.net for a free, no-obligation price quote, or call 631-758-3505 for a brochure. You'll be happy you did. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. 
Welcome to Formula Auto Wash, where every day is a great day for a car wash. Open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Detailing packages for every budget, starting out at $29.99. 100% hand wash in detail center. Pods hair and microfiber brushes and mitts. Proudly using Ecolab Blue Coral soaps and waxes. Formula Auto Wash has served the community for over 30 years. See any discounts all day, every day. Ladies Day Wednesday, $3 off any wash. Early bird discount Monday through Thursday till 9.30 a.m. Check out our website, formulaautowash.com. Dad, where do babies come from? Uh, oh, well, there's a, uh, th th there's Dad's big, shiny rocket ship. That's right, it's filled with babies, babies of all kinds. And when the shiny rocket ship penetrates, Mommy and Dad goes, uh, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, and when the time is just oh. right, there's a space launch. All systems go. Babies of all kinds. Released all over the place. Yeah, Africa. Uh, well, mommy's baby Landia. That's right, it's filled with babies. After an amazing nine months, babies. And that, son, is where babies come from. But Jake said babies come from planet. Baby Landia. You go, play with us on the bus. Wheels on the bus go round and Welcome back to the Solori No Guts, No Glory Hour with our guest, Jerry Ferretti. I'm going to let Jerry take over and introduce our musicians tonight. I'm just going to take a minute and say that I have two terrific musicians here that I met recently. I feel like I know them forever. This is Terry Halleck and Erin Fasano. And uh, this is a song that I wrote a couple of years ago. And we'd like to do it for you tonight. It's called Let's Make It Tonight. Okay, guys. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Oh, the night. 
Freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the bounce dryer bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer and I never have to remember. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful it sells itself in other people's commercials! You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power? Yeah, I do! Try this routine to feel fresh and clean. Pair Charmin Fresh Mates with your Charmin. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray is too powerful to stay in its own commercial. That's right. B -b 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 power. You're coming on one. Okay. As soon as he gives you the nod, get ready. I'm on. Okay. <laughs> we're back. You ready? We're gonna we're, we're switching it up a little bit. We're gonna do a slower song now, and then we'll end with a faster one. We're gonna do a song called Tomorrow. i 
been a long time since I saw my love It's been a long, hard road to overcome And a long, long time It's been a long Been a long time since she said goodbye. Long, long time to sit here and cry. She took my heart, maybe just to borrow for a long. Long, long tomorrow. Thank you. Great. Okay, we've got one more. This is another fun song. It's called Don't Touch My Guitar.
stuff is amazing. Great job, and Thank Terry Halleck, oh. fabulous. Erin Fasano, you. you guys were marvelous. Terry, great job, man. Thank you very much. Really? Too sweet. And yeah. I just want to say I wish you prosperous times ahead with your music, all of you as a collaboration and, and wherever, wherever it takes you. Um, again, right now Jerry's working on a website, uh, so there's not one currently, but he could be found on Facebook for now. It's Jerry, G-E-R-R-Y Ferretti, F-E-R-R-E-T-T-I, on Facebook, friend him, send him a, a message on the inbox. Hopefully and you'll see him next year at the Indie Film Festival, hopefully. And we're going to be playing together for a long time. Yes. We're forming a band, and we're going to be out there doing stuff real soon. So. Great. We look forward to it. We'll Jerry have you singing and, and, with us. Yeah, I would love to come up. Okay. You know, it's, yeah. Everything's a collaboration. The, the music world is one tiny little world that just comes together. Um, and every Big day, band. yeah, Big absolutely. Band. And okay. um, really quick, Terry, you're in a band? Yeah, Six Gun. Six Gun. Six Gun. Okay, so look, look for Terry. He's a country band, country rock kind of thing. Yeah, country rock, southern rock, originals. And he's fabulous. And you guys look him up. Go find the band. Go give him a shout out. If you're at a gig, go say hello. Uh, again, I'm Janet. That's Vinny. I'm Vinny. Next week, please tune in because we have two very good friends of ours, Mr. Matt Napo and Mikey Scarione, and their awesome band, the Rockin' 45s. You guys are going to love them. We love you guys for tuning in. Have a wonderful holiday weekend. Safe, happy, and we'll see you guys next Friday. Love you. Take care. Bye. Bye.